Welcome to Didactics Online Rib Diagnosis Video. I'm Brandon Parker and I got Rob Cowell with me here today. Go ahead and take a shirt off and get comfortable, Rob. So this video is an educational video intended to review the diagnosis of ribs. It is not a comprehensive video in order to replace any other teaching. So rib pain, by another name, can be chest pain. So it's very important to make sure that you're dealing with the right thing here. Cardiopulmonary or GI issues can be very serious and have to be dealt with before you deal with musculoskeletal. Up to 40% around um, of non-emergent cardiac or non-emergent chest pain cases are actually musculoskeletal. So it's a good thing to keep in mind, but of course not at the front when you have some more dangerous things possible. And also up to 20% of cardio cases with chest pain, you will have reproducible um, tenderness on palpation. So that's not just something you can say it's definitely musculoskeletal. So let's come over here and we'll talk a little bit about the rib motion. And there's a rib dance video that you guys should check out in order to get a little bit better idea. So in general, the first rib is going to move with pump and bucket handle and move up and down. Then two through five will be pump handle and move inhalation, exhalation. Then you go from six through 10 and that will be bucket handle and you'll move inhalation, exhalation. You then have caliper ribs with on inhaled, will move up and out and exhaled down and in. Now, just a good thing to keep in mind is that with respiration, and during inhalation, the diameter of the cavity of the chest will always increase and decrease on exhalation. So if you're ever stuck on what's actually going on, you can just think about that general principle. So I'm going to get in here and start diagnosing ribs. The first thing I'm going to do is that first rib, which just moves up and down with a combined pump handle and bucket handle motion. First thing you want to do is make sure that you have the soft tissue and the traps out of the way by pushing posteriorly. You can then move caudal moving inferiorly and get as medial as possible to make sure you're on the actual ribs. Here you're going to make sure you have any static findings and note those. Of course we've diagnosed all thoracics and made sure that there's no big dysfunctions there because that can throw off your rib diagnosis. So statically, Rob seems a little bit higher on that left side. That gives me a good piece of information but we're not done yet. We're going to then move into dynamic testing. So go ahead and take a deep breath in and out for me, Rob. And out. So ribs are always named for ease of motion. If both of Rob's ribs move nice and well on inhalation, moving up, and one of them is stuck going down, which that left one seems to be, we know that we have an inhaled left first rib. All ribs are named again for ease of motion. So moving well in inhalation and not coming down into exhalation. Then move in through two through five, which are going to be your pump handle ribs. This type of rib will normally cause pain more immediately, so around the sternum. That's where you want to diagnose these ribs. So you come off the sternum onto that corresponding rib and you feel that cephalod aspect. Two through five, you'll be in the same place and you want to get that static finding. Again, we're a little bit higher on that left side and we'll ask Rob to take a deep breath in and out. Now again, Rob moved well on inhalation on both and just really didn't come down into exhalation on that left side, so we'd call that an inhaled rib. Now if the left, left rib did not really move up well and both moved really well freely into exhalation, that would be an exhaled rib. So again, ease of motion for all of these. Now moving on through six through 10, which are gonna be your bucket handle ribs. This pain is gonna be a little bit more lateral. So in that axillary space, that's exactly where you wanna diagnose these ribs. So you can come in here and get a nice feel for all the rib motions during some inhalation and exhalation. So go ahead and take a big deep breath in and out for me, Rob. And we feel some restriction on Rob's right side, not really wanting to come into exhalation. So we think that he's got some inhaled ribs on this side. Of course, we can get a little bit more particular and get on actual ribs, again, on that same lateral side in that axillary space. You wanna make sure you're on the same ribs on both sides and go ahead and take a deep breath in and out for me. And we'd confirmed an inhaled rib on this side. Again, he was moving freely in inhalation and not really coming down in exhalation. Another thing that you can take a look at while we have Rob supine here is the space between ribs. If you think about just the general mechanics, if you have a rib that's inhaled, move up, and stuck, the space above it will be decreased. Again, if you have a rib that's exhaled and moved down, then the space above it will be increased. So that's another static finding that you can take into consideration, but again, you always want to use dynamic findings as well. Go ahead and flip over for me, Rob. So another great piece of information that you can use is the rib angle. That's very important in treatment as well. So you're going to come off the transverse process, move lateral on the ribs, and that very posterior bony landmark on the rib is the rib angle. Now on exhaled ribs, there will be prominence on the posterior side, as opposed to inhaled ribs, which have prominence on the anterior side. So you can come through here and do a quick screening, find any posterior 
landmarks, which would be the rib angle, and you could assume that that is a exhaled rib, and then you can move into a little bit more specific diagnosis. So moving down to the 11th and 12th rib, which remember, do not have any attachments on the front. These ribs move a little bit differently, but again, keeping that general principle in mind that the space for the lungs will increase during inhalation and decrease during exhalation. So if I just feel these ribs right here, I want to again go into the axillary region. I can actually find the tip of the 12th rib. I feel the 11th rib right above it, and I get a good feel of the entire rib. Then go ahead and take a big deep breath in for me. During inhalation, the ribs will move up and out. Exhalation, they will move down and in. You want to appreciate any free motion as well as restricted motion. Rob's moving pretty well, but if he moved really well in inhalation and just wouldn't come down in exhalation on one side, that'd be an inhaled rib. And of course, vice versa, if he moved well in inhalation on one side, but not really on the other, but moved well in exhalation on both, that'd be an exhaled rib on that side. So there you go, that's all the ribs for diagnosis. We have that rib dance video as well as some rib treatment videos coming up. If you have any questions or comments, please join us on didacticsonline.com.